Hi folks, this is what I've predicted. This is Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. It's um, been introduced in Munich uh, Electronics Fair uh, a few days ago and we can see that it's very similar to a Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, it's got the same system on chip, it's got memory module, RP1 microcontroller, Ethernet controller, power management controller and Wi-Fi controller. This are more or less the same. What is new actually is EMMC module. Uh, this is from the bottom side of the board and this module may be mounted or it also there would also be versions of modules without it. Here we have a selector which probably actually works. Um, I, I cannot say it for a hundred percent but looking at these connections here on the PCB, I would say that the TT actually uh, sets the size of the module. Um, you have, have uh, the maximum of 128 gigabytes, so uh, it depends. You have to decide what kind of module you want to have before buying a compute module. The same goes for the memory. Uh, you have four memory options currently available, but what is interesting is this here. Uh, probably they are going to make another version of BCM 2712 system on chip that would support I guess 16 gigabytes of memory maybe even more and uh, in this case uh, here uh, there would be uh, some kind of uh, zero ohm resistor that would indicate that this memory is much larger. The problem with memory is that you actually need a memory controller that also refreshes the memory because this is dynamic memory and in this case uh, the system on chip does not have the capacity to refresh more than 8 gigabytes of memory. You also need an additional address line but this is not so much of a problem. So what is basically done here is uh, that uh, if they enhance a little bit uh, of uh, this uh, BCM 2712 then it would have been possible not only to produce compute models with 16 gigabytes of memory or more but also to produce uh, Raspberry Pis with more than 8 gigabytes of memory. Okay, let's get back to this uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth controller. We see that this has been added. This is an external antenna connector and this is selector. This is actually, it can either use internal antenna, this is the same as on the Raspberry Pi 5, but this connector is actually missing on Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, if, you can, if you watch my video, you can see uh, how you can make it yourself if you want to. Uh, you can simply, there, here are two pins, you can connect them together and cut this line to the internal antenna and then uh, when you have this kind of connector you can connect an external antenna and to have already worked with your Raspberry Pi 5. I'm going to talk about this fan connector as well because it's very important one. Uh, you can use this connector to connect, actually it's the same as on Raspberry Pi 5 and you can connect any kind of uh, regulated fan, it's speed regulated fan uh, and it also has a speed indication and uh, of course this is why it's got four connections. And as you can see, uh, this compute module may also need some kind of cooling. And uh, if we take a look a little bit, uh, we can see that this is kind of cooler that would be great. This is a passive cooler. And uh, you can also have a fan on the chassis that blows air directly to this one. So this is quite a good solution. I've tested it myself and I like it. I must say that I like it very much. So this is a good solution. What I don't know exactly what these pins are used for. I know that Raspberry Pi 5 has a video output. Possibly this is a video about it. But of course the lines you can see here are very very close and uh, you cannot make sure whether this is uh, this might be power because it goes here and I know that uh, the middle two pins, uh, one of them uh, is uh, actually uh, it tells uh, PVM modulation that tells how fast the fan should turn. One is uh, 5 volt power supply and the other one is gauge that measures the RPM, uh, the actual RPM of 
and the fourth one is of course ground. So, but here we have just three pins, and this one seems to be ground. You see, and uh, it's hard to say what this could have been used for, but uh, it's obvious that you can solder a three pin header if you need it. Uh, so this is a really, a really great module, and let's go around this board and see what else it's got. This is also very interesting. We have this um, little large, it's a 14 pin header. Here is probably connector for an external button. This is uh, uh, PMIC enable. Uh, PMIC is actually data that you can gain from this power management controller and uh, you can uh, call it you can see all the voltages all the amperages uh, from this controller if you are using uh, vc uh, uh, gen command and this command is re really powerful it gives you a lot of uh, information and uh, you can watch this video if you want to learn more about it and here it is it's um, USB OTG. Um, I don't know whether probably there is no uh, real USB, but there is actually a selector. We have here a USB C port on Raspberry Pi 5. We have to programmatically determine the function of this USB C port. Either it can act as a device or it can act as a host. In either way, uh, it is primarily used for powering so when uh, it is uh, used as a uh, host it actually uh, is when it's powering uh, be, uh, being powered through this port then it communicates to the power supply and it can tell it to raise or lower the voltage in this case you don't want to do this because you need power 5 volts exactly for or 5.1 volts to power your raspberry pi but in some cases uh, there are other boards that they have special chips that uh, can instruct uh, your power supply to do what you want or you can also connect uh, to talk to your power supply if it's capable of reporting internal amperages uh, or internal state. Otherwise, you can connect a USB splitter here. You can drive data lines out to another device and you can use this port as uh, just as uh, just like on a smartphone. So uh, an alternate way of powering your Raspberry Pi is here. It's power over Ethernet. You need an adapter uh, which connects here. These are 5 volt input pins and uh, of course if uh, and you have a number of ground pins here and uh, of course you need a power uh, you need a voltage converter and power converter to get 5 volts because there are no 5 volts on uh, ethernet uh, ethernet is can be powered or can be unpowered so you have uh, you just get the raw power from the ethernet if it's powered through the ethernet so you still need an adapter just like for Raspberry Pi 5. What I don't think is that the adapters for Raspberry Pi 5 would have been also useful for Compute Module 5 I.O. board. Okay, let's go on. Here you can see that we have uh, two HDMI ports, HDMI 0 and 1. They are much more robust because they are full-sized and uh, this is better for industrial applications. We also have two uh, LED. Uh, diodes. Uh, one is to indicate the presence of power and the other one I guess it's to indicate the data transfer from uh, this uh, data drives that uh, you can connect here. You have a battery holder. Uh, Raspberry Pi 5 does not have any kind of battery holder. You just have a two pin uh, connector and then uh, you need a battery assembly. In this case, uh, they suggest a non-rechargeable battery, CR2032, which is common with many devices that we use at home. And I also use it on my Extreme Raspberry Pi 5. I've added a diode series to prevent accidental charging uh, of the battery. 
but here I don't know whether it's there is a protective diode or net, not but uh, actually software on uh, Raspberry Pi uh, system on chip is designed uh, to prevent uh, charging uh, initially and if you have uh, I think it's marked ML uh, if you have a rechargeable battery uh, for Raspberry Pi 5 you need a whole battery assembly because you have a special connector but here it's very simple you just buy a rechargeable battery this is the same size as this one and you plug it in you push it in and uh, then you have to enable in config.txt file uh, to make it possible to recharge each time that uh, your Raspberry Pi 5 is powered so what you have here we have also USB 3 ports there are just two of them uh, we are missing uh, USB 2.0 ports uh, there are actually not enough uh, pins on the two 100 pin uh, connectors that connect this uh, compute module to the carrier board uh, in this case compute module 5 file board and uh, that's why that we have less uh, capability okay maybe about this SD card um, yeah it's here you can plug it here but only under condition that you don't have uh, already uh, installed EMNC module on your uh, uh, compute module here we have another connector that is very useful it's a PCIe uh, M.2 M key connector this is used for SSD drives. You have all the different sizes available, except for the size that probably nobody uses. It's a little bit larger. It's also standardized, but we usually, okay, with PCs, we use this, we use these sizes. You have no PCIe switch, so this is the only PCIe device that you can connect. Uh, to this I.O. board, but okay, de it depends on the I.O. board. Y you may have in the future I.O. boards with the PCI switch and then there would have been more of this M.2 connectors. So you would have uh, probably two or even four connectors depending on the version of uh, chip. But the problem is actually that this configuration with only one uh, connector is actually faster because currently there are no PCIe switches that uh, would be that would be suitable for Raspberry Pi that would be one lane uh, and uh, that would run on Gen 3 standard so if you are using uh, currently this switch it's just Gen 2 standard and this means approximately 5 megabytes per second instead of 985 with Gen 3 and I also believe that this uh, carrier board uh, is made well enough uh, that uh, these connections are not too long to enable uh, Gen 3 standard because with Raspberry Pi 5 Gen 3 is not guaranteed I hope that at least uh, this module can flawlessly run uh, with Gen 3 uh, here we have camera display port and another camera display port so here we have two jumpers uh, if you place them we also enable this camera display port as you can see uh, this port enables you to connect either digital camera like the one you see here or a digital display it doesn't matter you, you can choose what to connect where and uh, power button this is actually an alternative way of powering because there is no power button of course on the computer module okay i hope that you've liked this video if you did uh, please press like and subscribe buttons also don't forget about the notification bell and see you in the next video bye